I've heard that some people struggle to enjoy Christopher Nolan's sci-fi film Interstellar. This makes sense to me because it's perhaps the best movie ever for sorting out those who can suspend their disbelief in the face of a little storytelling hand-waving and those who can't. Released way back in 2014, the film was written by Jonathan Nolan, Christopher's brother, and was once set to be directed by Steven Spielberg. Fortunately, that didn't work out. No shade to Spielberg there, but what we ended up with was so magnificent, there's no point in rewriting history. And with a few tweaks, it landed in Christopher Nolan's lap. According to Nolan, the film was inspired by classic movies such as 2001 A Space Odyssey, Star Wars, Blade Runner, weirdly Jaws, and a bunch of other movies he saw growing up from an era he termed the golden age of the blockbuster. It features no less than seven Oscar winners, including Matt McConaughey, Anne Hathaway, Michael Caine, Jessica Chastain, Matt Damon and Casey Affleck. I won't linger too long on the story, as most of us will know it, I'm sure, but our hero is Matt McConaughey's Cooper, a former NASA astronaut and now farmer in the dusty fields of a future Earth. A virus is slowly decimating the planet's key crops, threatening extinction, and Coop tries to eke out a living with his father-in-law, played by John Lithgow, his daughter Murph, and his son Tom, played by Timothy Chalamet and later Casey Affleck. One day, a strange occurrence happens that I won't spoil, leading to some GPS coordinates which in turn take Coop to a secret NASA base. There, he learns of a plan to save humanity by sending a team of scientists through a wormhole that's appeared near Saturn. Dr Brand, NASA's leader, played by Michael Caine, asks him to pilot the mission and Coop is faced with a difficult choice. Leave, try and save the human race, but perhaps never see his family again, or stay and live out his life on Earth, letting someone else do the job. Coop travels through the wormhole and starts to explore some potential new planets on the other side. But will any of them be suitable as a new home for humanity? And more importantly, was there something in the plan that Dr Brand didn't tell Coop, something that will change the course of everyone's lives? An emotional, thoughtful action movie such as this is only as good as its hero character, and Matthew McConaughey as Coop is magnificent right from minute one to the end. A hero needs to be proactive, constantly going after their goal, otherwise it's impossible for an audience to connect with them. Coop is all that and more. Nolan said when he was casting for the role that he wanted an everyman who could experience extraordinary events. McConaughey, with his laid-back southern drawl, is perfect, always interesting to watch, never saying anything in a way you expect, always bringing a fresh take to a scene. He was on a good run of form around 2014, with that first season of True Detective coming out then too. Coop has some tough moments in the film, some real emotional scenes, and McConaughey nails them. Take, for example, the moment he loses 23 years in a relativity error and is watching back missed video calls from his family. It's a single camera shot, close up on his face, smiling, crying, bereft. He really sells the loss of time, and I doubt many actors could have performed it as well. It's not just McConaughey. The whole cast puts in a decent shift. Anne Hathaway holds her own as younger Dr Brand, jousting with Coop as they try to work out how to survive. Casey Affleck isn't on the screen much and doesn't have a huge amount to say, but makes an impression nevertheless. When does he not? Matt Damon is so well cast as the duplicitous Dr Mann, a good person corrupted by the awful situation he finds himself in. Jessica Chastain has some wonderful moments as the older Murph, and even a very young Timothy Chalamet gives off a few warm embers of what was to come. Good though they are, the actors are just a tiny part of what makes Interstellar so fantastic. For a movie to really sing, the script needs to be on point, and it works brilliantly here. Apart from a tiny overload at the start, it handles exposition so well, bringing it out through conflict between characters. It shows you all you need to know about someone as soon as you meet them, with a carefully chosen scene, a meaningful piece of dialogue. It has some fantastic lines, such as... Used to look up in the sky and wonder at our place in the stars. Now we just look down and worry about our place in the dirt. Among many more. The scripts of Nolan films are always dense, doing multiple things at once. Conflict, characterization, character development. It's textbook stuff and it's not surprising his stories burst with life. The art design of the film is also special. Nolan's known for his love of practical effects and that's absolutely in evidence here. There's a NASA punk feel to the film that echoes Kubrick's 2001, the more recent Moon, both obvious as soon as the crew gets into space, but also Bethesda's recent Starfield game. The filmmakers never go for the obvious design. The TARS and Case robots are great examples, looking not like C-3PO, but more like metallic Lego. 
There are so many memorable scenes in Interstellar. The giant wave on the water planet, astonishing as the camera pans up and up and keeps panning. Behind the bookshelf, inside the wormhole. But the big one for me is Coop's docking with the out of control spaceship. I've said a bunch of times that a movie's job is to entertain and move, and that scene gives me goosebumps every time. When Coop puts everything on the line, it's hard not to feel yourself cheering inside. The tension's enormous, and it has to be one of the best scenes in cinema. Speaking of that scene, part of what makes it work so well is Hans Zimmer's swirling, organ-filled soundtrack. Apparently, Nolan instructed him to make a unique score for the film without even giving him the full script. I don't know whether that's true, but the themes Zimmer came up with are among his absolute best, and Interstellar would be half of what it is without them. I can't think of a bigger compliment to pay. There's so much else that's good about the movie. For a two hour and 47 minute film, the pacing is spot on, shifting from action to character work and back at a cadence that makes it feel far shorter than it is. It's quite a complex movie in its science, especially for a lay audience, but as usual, Nolan's so good at making it all understandable. It's a bit of a cliche to have robots with slightly sarcastic personalities, but even so, some of Tarza's lines are hilarious. And the characters are put through the ringer. Coop and co are forced to make some tough decisions with big consequences. It makes a fascinating viewing. Despite all of this positive, we come back to that problem I mentioned at the start. The hand-waving in the story. The coincidences. Apparently Nolan tried hard with Professor Kip Thorne consulting on the film to make the story as scientifically accurate as possible. But there was a caveat. Nolan wouldn't let that accuracy get in the way of the making of the movie. I'm inclined to agree with him. Had he been stricter, rewrote some of the hand-waving storytelling, perhaps Interstellar might have turned out differently. Maybe it wouldn't have had the same emotional resonance. I know that would have made some happier, but not me. By holding firm, what we got with Interstellar was cinema at its absolute finest. And if we have to sacrifice a little realism to suspend our disbelief a little more to get that, then so be it. It's a price I'm willing to pay. Anyway, nothing more to say. This is Movie Maverick, signing out.